everybody, it's Mariana with Three Piece Classroom. In today's video, I'm going to go over how I run math stations in my own classroom to give you guys some ideas or you know how to enhance your already existing math rotations in your classroom. Or if you're not doing math stations, then maybe this is kind of giving you the boost to get started to do math stations in your own classrooms. Before I dive into today's video, I do want to share a gift with you. If you struggle with planning or timetables or you know, pacing yourself appropriately or covering all of the outcomes in language arts, I have put together a free schedule that you can download. Uh, this schedule goes over what my lessons look like in language arts on any given day of the week. So I talk about, you know, Monday to Friday, how long does each lesson take me? What is the lesson that I'm doing? What is the focus and notes for you, the teacher, if you want to replicate my schedule. Following the schedule helps me to have a very well-rounded language arts program and following this I know that I'm hitting a lot of my outcomes because I'm doing a little bit of reading a little bit of writing a little bit of grammar a little bit of phonics a little bit of guided reading daily five journal writing all of that I cover it all so if this is something that you're interested in having you can go ahead and go to my website threepeaksclassroom.com that's the number three forward slash ela schedule and you can grab yourself this free download let's talk about math stations. I like to have five math stations in my classroom just like I do in daily five and the reason is very simple. If I have five stations that means I have five groups and that means my groups are smaller. If I like if I do daily three like a lot of teachers do in their classroom you know math daily three then I'm dividing my group into three and if I have 30 students in my class that means I'm meeting with 10 kids that's not feasible. So I have five stations and I pray to God that I don't have 30 kids in my classroom, but if I did and I have five stations, that means that I'm meeting with six kids, which is a lot more manageable. Really quickly, the five stations that I like to have in my classroom, the first one is always math by myself. The second one is digital math. The third one is a math game. The fourth one is math books. And the last station is always math but with the teacher. So let's dive in. First station, math by myself. What does that look like? Well, generally math by myself is students are sitting at their desks. This is, um, they're given an activity like either a worksheet or questions from a textbook, or maybe I've printed questions, or maybe it's a page that they have to hand in to me. Whatever it is, it's themselves working independently at their desks. And um, this is a skill that they have already learned before and they are just practicing that skill. Students should not be struggling at the table. They should already know what to do and they should know how to do it. So that is math by myself. Now, if kids do have a question, if they're sitting and they're not sure what the question looks like, or if they're not sure, you know, what the question is asking them, they are welcome to ask their friends for clarity, but obviously they're not allowed to ask for the answer. I also will occasionally ask them to hand this work in. So they don't know which date they're supposed to hand it in to me. So if it's a worksheet or if it's, you know, questions in the math textbook or whatever, they know that by the end of the 10 minute timer, they should have completed the two, three, four questions that are listed there for math by myself. I like to start with math by myself first and then follow it up with digital math so that students that happen to finish early on math by myself, instead of them sitting at their desk and just waiting for the timer to run out, uh, they are welcome to move from math by myself, hand it in if necessary, and then go and grab their laptops or whatever device and they get to start working on their digital math. Now there are two websites that I swear by for math stations. Mathletics, my school provides a um, subscription for each of my students, so I love Mathletics. And I also use a website called Splash Learn, and uh, it's free to use. It is an American company though, so you have to be careful which class you select. I would normally select a class lower. So even though I taught grade four or grade three, I would always select a grade younger because I found that the math concepts aligned better. Now, of course, with our new curriculum and stuff, there might be some outcomes that are not covered in this American website, but that's okay. If it's a free website and let's say 75% of it kind of matches our curriculum, I'm okay with that. So we use Mathletics and we use Splash Math and I will you know, put it on the board so the kids know that I've assigned, you know, one assignment to them or whatever, and they have 10 minutes to uh, get started. If they don't finish that, then the next time they do splash math or next time we do digital math, they have to finish the lesson from before in addition to the lesson that um, I've assigned for them that day. So 
uh, I love using digital math as one of my stations in my classroom. The third station that I like to have in my math station rotation is a math game. And the math game can be played individually with partners or in a whole group. It doesn't matter. It's up to the kids and it depends on the game that I've provided. I'm currently doing a whole series talking about the games that I use in my classroom depending on the unit. I've already filmed a video entirely dedicated to my place value games. So if you're interested in seeing that video, I will link that in the description below. Um, but I will pull a game out of my bin and I'll pull it, put it on one of the smaller carpets that I have in my classroom and the kids know to rotate to that station and they can choose to play a whole version or individual or with a partner. But the math game is a concept or a skill that we have already covered. So if we're currently doing addition and subtraction, then it could be an addition and subtraction game, or it could be a game that we've previously learned in place value, for example. So I might pull a game from a previous unit just to keep those skills a little bit more fresh so or sometimes I'll give them an option too. maybe they prefer this game over that game they can choose so math game is essential in my math station rotations the fourth station is one that you might not have in your classroom but I can't imagine doing my math rotations without this station and it is math books so I have a bin dedicated to just books about math concepts like storybooks for example I saw this being used while I was doing observation, I was observing another grade three teacher um, and I fell in love with that idea. It's basically a bin full of math books. Generally, what I like to do is I like to include books that are particular to the topic that we are reading about because, you know, I have a limited amount of, of books that are about math. And so I will include like if we're doing addition and subtraction, then I will have books that are all about adding or subtracting or around that theme. Plus, I will also include books that we have already talked about in previous units, so place value books or anything like that. So, but in this station, the book bin is literally just placed right in the middle of the classroom uh, carpet, and the kids in the, in the group, they are welcome to read individually with a partner, as a whole group, whatever they want to do. Uh, but the idea here is that they are, you know, reading books that have to do with a math concept. And of course, the final station is math with the teacher. So like I mentioned earlier in the video, this is my opportunity to meet with all of my students in a small group setting. I don't typically arrange my groups in any which way. They're usually kind of random, but if I'm noticing that a particular group of students is lower in a concept or if they're really struggling in a concept, then for that one day or the next two days, I might group those um, struggling students into one group and I'll meet with them first and we will go over the concepts again, we'll practice the concepts before I send them to their next station, which would be math by myself. So if that's the case, then I, yeah, I'm meeting with those struggling students, but typically I like to do a mix. And the reason why I like to do that is because everybody is sitting at the table with me and I will give everybody a very basic question to start. And so maybe that's a two digit addition question, for example, and they should be able to complete that question with no, no problems. And then what I like to do is I like to challenge the students. So, you know, I might give my struggling students another two digit question and I might say over here, okay, you're gonna get a three digit and you're gonna get a five digit or something. I like to mix it up and I like to challenge the students in that way. So some notes about how I run math stations. I mentioned earlier that I don't typically group my students according to ability. I typically just do it randomly because when I'm doing language arts, they're typically grouped by strategy. And so I feel like perhaps a lot of the kids will be with similar groups in daily five or similar students, I should say. But in math, I like to keep it random. So for the most part, my students are grouped randomly. My stations last 10 minutes and that allows for one to two minute transitions between stations. And then of course, a little bit time at the end to clean up because my math block is a 60 minute math block. I do have a special helper that goes to my smart board and it reset, they reset the digital timer that I have and they also take care of my slides. So I have a slideshow with five different slides and we start with the first slide and then the second slide shows the groups have shifted a group. Um, and so I have my special helper of the day just select the second slide and then that way they can see, um, you know, what station they're supposed to be at. 
Um, I go into detail about this in my daily five video, so I will link my daily five video as well down below in case you're curious of what that looks like because I'm not in the classroom right now. Uh, as you guys know, some of you might know I am on mat leave. So I would show you this in the classroom, but I'm at home right now. So uh, if you want to see what that looks like in my classroom, I will link the video down below. But I do have a special helper of the day that takes care of my timer and my schedule, like my rotations, so that I can just stay put at my teacher table and just while kids are transitioning, I can gather my materials and get ready to go. Finally, if I need to assess my students or if I need to, you know, have something written down, I usually do a checklist system. So I'll have post-it notes with the groups already made, you know, the five or six kids in the group. And as they're sitting with me, I have that post-it note ready and I'll give them a question. And if a student gets the question correct, I don't write a check mark because it's quite obvious that I'm doing a check mark. I'll actually write a slash. I will write a slash and that is kind of like a check mark, but it's to let me know, yeah, they didn't have any problems, so they got that one. But if they did make a mistake or if they got it wrong, then I'll write a dash. But if they made a mistake and then corrected themselves, then I will write a dash with a slash through it. Of course, those words rhyme. <laughs> so in that way, I have a, a running record and a little checklist with me so that when I sit down to update their marks in their grade books, then I can look and I can say, okay, you know, this on Monday when we did stations, then I noticed that there were a lot of dashes, but then when we reinforced it on Tuesday and Wednesday, I noticed a lot of slashes so I could see that they are practicing and they're developing. So they are definitely, you know, progressing. So that is how I do a quick checklist system um, if I wanted to assess the students while they are with me. And that's it. That is how I run my math stations. Now I don't do math stations every day, but I like to do math stations for the majority of the week. So similar to how I run my LA schedule, I like to teach a whole group concept like on a Monday or a Tuesday, and I use my math notebook to do that. So let's say, for example, that we are in addition and subtraction, like I was mentioning. They have an addition and subtraction notebook. And the first lesson that I might teach my students, or one of the first lessons that we might go over, is a whole group lesson on regrouping. And so with my students, we would talk about the I can statement and how it relates to the program of studies, you know, how they should be able to show me their learning. And then we create this anchor chart together. I will make a master copy for the class that'll hang on my wall and the students will create their own version in their math books so that when they're doing math by themselves, if they have a question, instead of interrupting me or a student that's working, their first line of defense here is they can look inside their math notebooks to remind themselves, how do I do that again? Oh yeah, okay, here are the steps. Everything's color coordinated, awesome. This will help me answer my questions. So like I mentioned, I do a whole math lesson so that I know everybody has the same foundational knowledge. And then the math stations are used, of course, to reinforce that skill. And so we'll do this on a Monday, then maybe on Tuesday as a whole group, we will practice that skill with whiteboards or something. And then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I'll do math stations to reinforce all that learning. Now, if you like this idea, if you liked my math notebooks, um, my interactive math notebooks so far, I have a bundle that is growing right now. So currently, if you're watching this in current time when I'm posting it, I have four units that are ready to go. I have place value, I have data analysis, I have a patterns notebook, and my most recent addition was addition and subtraction. So I am working on all, adding all of the units to my interactive math notebook um, resource. If that is something that you're interested in looking at, I will post a link down below in the description of the video and you can have a look and you can grab yourself any one of the units that you feel you could use a little boost in. Or if you want to get in early on the growing bundle, then you pay the early price and then you get free updates every time I added a new resource. So math notebook in my TPT store. And if you want the free ELA schedule, this is in my class. This is in my website threepeaksclassroom.com forward slash ELA schedule. Thank you so much for being here. I so appreciate each and every one of you and I appreciate all of your comments, by the way. When you leave a comment down below, I love reading them, I love replying to you, and it also gives me an idea of what you're thinking of and what you're wondering of so that I can create a video for you on YouTube. So if there's something that you're curious about, feel free to leave me a comment down below. As always, I love all the likes and the subscribes, so thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.